What's happening, guys? This is Logan from Here the Spear, presented to you by Noel Game Day. We have a hire. It is official. Florida State and Mike Norvell have agreed to terms and to a deal. Mike Norvell will be Florida State's next head coach in Tallahassee. This is our Instant Reaction podcast, uh, and we can listen to this podcast on every platform available. Uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play. If you're on iTunes, feel free to rate us five stars. It helps a lot. Uh, but let's go and jump right into it right now. With us tonight is our lead uh, writer, Dustin Lewis. What's happening, man? Good evening. Hey, what's going on? It's only been six weeks. We've been waiting for this thing to happen. Yeah, I know it, man. <laughs> it, I, this has been tough. Going through midterms, at least I had like late midterms and now finals. This has just been a whole month of no sleep, a lot of preparation, a lot of rumors, a lot of conspiracies. Um, it, it's just been nuts. I, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think a lot of the other um, outlets uh, have seen this before, too. It's just been it's been crazy. And then the search firm had a lot of this stuff on, on lockdown for the most part. Yeah, but you know, we we prevailed through it, and we are we are finally here. We are into the the Novell era, as yes. Peach would say from the other night. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> exactly. It is. Uh, it, this is crazy, and uh, it's been. I think a lot of the fan base is very happy that this whole ride is over with. Um, tomorrow will be the official press conference with Norvell. Uh, today, Florida State released a statement saying that they were going to have a press conference uh, announcing the new head coach, but there was no name given on that statement. Uh, so they are wanting to do that official announcement and put the name on everything tomorrow afternoon at noon at nolgameday.com. We will have an article ready with the, we'll have a We'll have you set up with a stream there. I know a lot of you want to know where you can watch the live stream. That will be available on nullgameday.com. We will get that out to you guys, hopefully, um, in a good amount of time before that begins. So y'all can head over there. Uh, but yeah, well, let's let's jump into just first initial reacts reactions. Dustin, what was uh, yours when the rambling started to happen in the last 48 hours? Yeah, I mean, from the beginning... We've kind of thought it would be Bob Stoops, and then we thought maybe it's going to be Matt Campbell or James Franklin, and then finally it ends up being Mike Norvell, who, by all accounts, is you know it's not a it's not a superstar hire like Stoops or Franklin would be, but this is a solid hire by all accounts, and it's a chance for Norvell to prove himself at the highest level of college football. So, you know, I I think this is a good hire for Florida State. I want to see the the terms of his deal before I make a final judgment call on it. But mm -hmm. by everything he's accomplished at Memphis, I mean, this isn't really, I would say the same thing as Willie Taggart because, you know, Taggart had a negative record when he, when he came over to Florida state, he, he struggled at some of the, the programs he took over, which I mean, was fine by all accounts because he was rebuilding, rebuilding them. But Norvell stepped in at Memphis after Justin Fuente and, there's been no drop off. I mean, Memphis has won at least eight games in all four of his seasons there. They're 12 and one this year. Won their their first AAC conference championship in a while, and he's he's 38 and 15 overall as a head coach. So he's proven himself to be a winner at the lower level, and now he's got to do it at Florida State. Mm -hmm. Mike Norvell is 38 years old. Obviously, I think a lot of the fans are. You know, contemplating a little bit of the hire because of the experience, and and the main key is that Florida State is in a in a really uh, tough spot, and they're one they're they're in a big rebuilding situation, and I think a lot of the fans wanted someone with an experience in college football, uh, being a head coach for a long while that is has a proven track record of building up a program. Justin Fuente left for Virginia Tech, but. Uh, the, the program at Memphis was kind of built up there for Norvell to come in and, and just continue the trend of winning games. Um, but Norvell is going to come into a different scenario, right, Dustin? I mean, yeah, definitely. And I mean, to your point on FSU fans wanting someone 
more established. I mean, it it just wasn't realistic because uh, you got to think Taggart's seventeen million dollar buyout is now on the books, and to bring a guy in here like Stoops or Campbell or Franklin, I mean, you're you're talking about having to pay eight or nine million annually to even get the conversation started to get them to Tallahassee. So just with the way the money situation is right now, there there was no way that was going to happen. No, no. And there, there's just so much money. And that's, that's where we'll talk to. I think I'm in the same boat as Dustin to where I really want to see the terms and the money amount that they'll be throwing at Norvell. Because I think nowadays in coaching, you know, you get your head coach, but now, I mean, the biggest thing immediately after is who is going to be around him and be their assistant coaches. Um, and that that's going to play the big role here money-wise, too. How much is Florida State going to be able to play with money-wise to be able to throw at some uh, uh, assistant coaches and, and some people? Because right now, you know, Florida State is about tired of the defensive uh, play right now the last uh, couple of years. I mean, going even back to Charles Kelly, I mean, it's been atrocious, um, and Florida State is wanting to look a lot of answers on that side of the ball, too. Yeah, I agree with you, and uh, to your point, Memphis actually has had the, the 33rd ranked defense um, for yards against the play, and their their defensive coordinator is, is certainly a guy Norvell could possibly bring with him to Tallahassee. I mean, really for assistant coaches, I, I honestly, I don't really know who's going to stick around on staff. I mean, with a 38-year-old coach now in place, you can figure 36-year-old Kendall Bryles and Randy Clements are probably out the door. Um, a lot of the other guys on staff already weren't expected to be retained. And then now there's also the, the question of Odell. Well, will he be fine? know continuing to, to coach under a, a far younger coach that that has led the program in a while mm-hmm. yeah there's been <laughs> Odell Higgins has been through it you know you go through <laughs> <laughs> you go through the Jimbo Fisher situation which was already a complete mess and he has to jump in and be an interim head coach um, and, and try to reach uh, bowl uh, bowl eligibility and then uh, then you go over and of course the Willie Tiger being let go and, and now, you know, a new head coach is coming in. There's just been so many transitions and, and that's why we'll also bring it over to the player situation too. Uh, because I mean, th- this is just a, a total mess for them. You would think, uh, it, it, they, they've been told they'll have this coach and then they're not. And then they finally, you know, we'll, we'll have Mark, Mike Norvell, and, you know, after letting Tiger go. And Tiger had a lot of close relationships with these players. And, you know, the, the, the transfer portal is there. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if uh, Norvell will keep some of these, is, is going to be able to keep some of these players in Tallahassee and also recruits. But it, it's just been a tough thing overall for these players the last couple of years at Florida State. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that... Going through, especially guys who signed with Jimbo and and are still here. I mean, going through three coaches really since 2017. You had Fisher there till nearly the end of the, the 2017 season. Taggart was announced in December 2017, and now literally two years later, you're announcing Mike Norvell. So three coaches and and really less than three years. So I mean, mentally, that's just kind of fatigue, guys. You don't know who's who's going to be there. The stabi- the stability of the program has no doubt been affected, and you know it's it's like you said, Logan. There's definitely going to be some guys that hit the transfer portal and probably don't return to Florida State, but there are certainly some guys that Norvell is going to be able to convince and start to build around. So we'll see, and especially the recruiting class. Florida State lost three commits last night. Um, they have a big recruiting weekend. Still scheduled for this upcoming weekend, Friday, December 13th. 14 players are supposed to officially visit. So that'll really be the start of when he starts to salvage this recruiting class. and We'll get to see what he can do. Uh, I don't think 
we recorded and, and got to note on the three decommitments. Do you want to name those for those listening that might have not been updated or don't know who those were? Yeah, sure. Yeah, last night or throughout Friday, I would say, and within hours of each other, Florida State lost three big commits on on the defensive side of the ball, and that included local local player out of Wakula High School, four star linebacker Keyshawn Green, who. Actually, on the the last episode of the podcast, I was like, he's probably a guy that won't decommit if <laughs> decommitted <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> and then two other guys I noted on as well on the podcast that I said were uh, probably going to decommit or at least consider some other schools before signing with FSU. Three-star defensive end Josh Griffith and three-star defensive end Morvin Joseph. They both decommitted. Um, Griffiths has been getting some interest from Nebraska and Louisville and I honestly think Joseph might be headed to the Gators, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Great. But all three of those guys actually are on that list to officially visit Tallahassee next week. So maybe mm-hmm. Norvell can get them back in the fold. Yep, yep. It'll be an interesting we'll, – we'll keep a close eye on it too. Um, hopefully – our our lead guy and recruiting insider Jeremiah Zanders, uh, will, will hopefully he'll be able to give out some good updates uh, for you guys on that recruiting front because this is a crucial crucial time obviously for Florida State moving forward and they got to try to salvage this class uh, as much as it, as they can and also build on it for the, before the early signing period. Um, I want to run through like a little fact here for talking about Norvell as an offensive minded coach and also a QB guy. Um, the Tigers scored 40 plus uh, eight times and 50 plus three times uh, this season, and they were averaging 41.5 points per game. Uh, they also averaged 48, uh, 483 and a half yards of total offense per game, while showing off tremendous balance. Uh, actually, his starting quarterbacks have averaged 34 and a half touchdowns to two uh, and nine interceptions. Uh, since 2016 so it seems like he's a pretty well proven quarterbacks coach Dustin yeah absolutely I mean he's had the benefit of having some great quarterbacks at Memphis and some of that honestly is by Norvell's own accord his current quarterback Brady White Norvell originally recruited him to Arizona State when he was the co off or the offensive coordinator and the quarterbacks coach out in Tempe and Whenever he came to Memphis, White followed him. He had to sit out in 2017. And the last two seasons, I mean, he's, he's been really good for the Tigers. He's thrown 58 touchdowns to 17 interceptions. This season, he's completing 66.4% of his passes and has 32 touchdowns to so just eight picks. So, yeah, he's had, some, he's had some really good players at Memphis, but Norvell has also been able to help them take that next step to where they're stars at the lower level. And, I'm honestly really interested to see if maybe Brady White would follow Norvell to Tallahassee. It's a piece we'll be dropping on no game day tomorrow, so make sure to check it out. Mm-hmm. Yep, Dustin will be out releasing that. We have a lot of articles going out tomorrow early morning, so I know this podcast is hopefully going to be uploaded tonight. We're recording this late on Saturday night, but we have a lot of coverage and a lot of great articles yeah. coming out from Dustin tomorrow morning, getting you guys ready and for that press conference also. Yeah, but just a little bit more on, on Brady Wright, White real quick. I mean, he's not your typical grad, grad transfer. Jesus, I'm tripping over words here. Um, he's, he's actually, he's already earned his graduate degree, and he's currently working on his doctorate in just five years of college. Oh. So this is an extremely smart guy, and it makes sense why he's had so much success under Norvell in that system. So a smart guy. You're not going after your doctorate, are you, Dustin? <laughs> I'm not even going after my degree at this point. I'm just, I'm just here. <laughs> You're just here. We haven't had any time to study, anyways. Last month, so <laughs> we might be here for a little bit longer than we thought. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, I, 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 hopefully we'll be able to have Austin on soon to to, to join in on this. Um, I know Dustin. And I just wanted to come on here and have an instant reaction to this hire. Uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about after we hear the terms money wise, maybe some more details on possible assistance that will, those kind of rumblings will start kicking up a lot more tomorrow morning and heading into the rest of the early part of the week next week. Um, 
unless there's anything else you have, Dustin, um, I'm trying to think here if I do. Uh, we just wanted to come on here and have an instant reaction, and we'll have a lot more. We'll dive into a lot more things once we're able to sit back and uh, read some things on Norvell. Um, and we'll have more details, like I said, on the assistant coaches, which is a vital thing for Florida State moving forward. And if they have if they have the extra money to throw out some of these elite assistants or not, or if, or if Norvell wants to keep some of that home uh, feeling of assistance that he has at Memphis right now. Yeah. And just, just really quick, I, I think Florida State fans, they, they should be really excited about this hire. I mean, Norvell and Memphis – they really they dominated just about everyone they played this year. They did lose on the road to Temple, who had a pretty good defense in 2019. But they beat previously undefeated SMU in a nationally televised college game day atmosphere earlier this season. That was 54 to 48. I mean, that was a barn burner. And then these last two weeks, back to back wins over ranked Cincinnati to get to 12 and one, and when they're like I said, win their first AAC title in, I think, school history. So, a record-setting season for Memphis under Norvell, and let's see if he can carry that into Tallahassee. It officially starts now. It does. It does. This is it. This is the Norvell era in Tallahassee. We'll have a lot to talk about. We will be bringing on guests, too, former Knowles, to discuss and get their reactions to it, too, and then and the, and the in the next few weeks, um, a lot of coverage here on here. The spear uh, will be have a lot of coverage. Shout out to, of course, Dustin on here. He has done a fantastic job uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, and also today, just getting you guys fully infoed and just fully covered on this hire. It's been craziness, uh, but Dustin has done an insane amount of work trying to give you guys detail and info on this and shout out to him and then also our lead graphic designer i know you guys know fisher he was on here as our co-host but shout out to him also he came up with the graphic and the coaching swap and the design there uh he did a fantastic job uh finals is going on for all of us here uh, us three are all still in school so i shout out i just want to show appreciation to those two they they kill it um and it, it's definitely not over now. We still got a lot more stuff to do, but they did a great job today and in the last month or so, just being able to prepare for everything. Because we had gra- Fisher had graphics for Stoops, and he was prepared for, prepared for any coach uh, ready. But yeah, shout out to both of those guys. But yeah, as always, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play. If you're on iTunes, feel free to rate us five stars. It always helps a ton, grows to and throws it to more FSU listeners. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can follow us at Here the Spear. There will not be a fun fact tonight, or <laughs> no fun fact or FSU trivia. We'll be waiting until yeah. we get back. Yeah, Can't we'll do wait trivia by myself. Yeah, <laughs> nope, it doesn't really work that way. So uh, we'll be doing that whenever Austin is able to get back on here too. Um, and we'll be back to our regular regular podcasting. This is just our instant reaction to Mike Norvell being named the head coach of the Florida State Seminoles press conference tomorrow at 12 o'clock on Sunday. And, yeah, we will talk to you guys soon in our next episode. Enjoy the rest of y'all's weekend.